Kevin Miller is the brother of No Limits record owner Percy Miller, aka Master P. He was born in New Orleans and they resided in the Calio Projects on the old side, Mirror Courtway on Erata Street. The Millers come from a large family. Kevin brother Master P mentioned in several interviews how it was he, his four siblings, and 12 of his grandmother's children that lived in a three bedroom apartment in the Calio. In a situation like this, there's always an adversary. That's the reason for such conditions. And that adversary is poverty. What is poverty? According to Investopedia's definition of the word poverty, poverty is a state or a condition in which a person or a community lack the financial resources and essentials for a minimal standard of living. Poverty means that the income levels from employment is so low that the basic human needs can't be met. Poverty stricken people and families might go without proper housing, clean water, healthy food, and medical attention. Each nation may have its own threshold that determines how many of its people are living in poverty. On Master P's Instagram page, under the picture with him and his siblings, he stated that we, talking about himself and his siblings, we grew up in the Calio projects surrounded by poverty and violence. He stated that Kevin, who I'm doing the story on, his sister Germany, his brother Corey, and Vajan and I didn't have name brand clothes and we was hungry most of the time but we always kept a smile on our face because we had love we was happy and thankful for the little things I was happy because I should tell people all the time that if Michael Jackson could take his family out the hood Percy Miller is gonna get his family out of the ghetto and one day I will buy my grandmother and my mama a big house sometimes you have to speak things into existence sometimes poverty is created to control people or put them in a desperate state though the Millers might have been coined as living in poverty they was rich in spirit their grandmother, whom they call Big Mama, held down the house. She made sure that the house stayed clean, she cooked for the household, made sure the kids went to school, and the family attend church. Long before you knew it, a young Percy would jump off the porch, and not too long behind him, his brother Kev would follow suit. The Miller brothers saw basketball as a ticket out of the hood, but they had to address their medium circumstances of poverty, which resulted in the brothers engaging in hustling. Percy cousin, Jimmy Keller, AKA Hot One, AKA Hot Boy, was the one that introduced him to the game. He was the one that taught him the do's and the don'ts of hustling. And P brought in his brother Kev as his partner and someone to watch his back in the shady and cutthroat business of the dope game. Kev and P looked up to the old school hustlers like that of Pitching Bob, Dip, Lil Car, Poppin' Boo, Al Broadnecks, and Sam Scully. There was others that existed throughout the city. The brothers was teens and getting their hustling on on a small level during the Glen Mess days in Uptown New Orleans. At this time, there were several cliques scattered throughout the city. There was a situation that occurred 
which resulted in Master P and his boys to form the Click, which is called the Tuesday Crew. P talks about it in the Feds Magazine interview about how he and his friends almost got robbed by someone from another part of Uptown. And this all happened on a Tuesday. And he said that they wowed out from there on due to the situation. And it happened on a Tuesday and they called themselves the Tuesday Crew. And he said that on every Tuesday, it was on, if you know what I'm talking about. And this group was also put together to protect that which was theirs and to protect their families. The crew consisted of Bruce, Ronell, Johnny, Klukey, Chris, Kev, Herb, Percy, and they was Tuesday crew. The crew was teenagers who motors was to hustle and get it how they live. They was adored with saw blade medallions on their chains and they wore the baddest outfits. They would hit the city in their trucks, their cars, or either their motorbikes. At the same time, even though they was in the streets, they believed in staying in school to get their education. But Kev and P, they played basketball around hustling and going to school. And they also competed in basketball tournaments throughout the city. What people don't know is that Kev used to DJ. He was known and Kev was good with the women. Plus he was no one to mess with. There was an incident that took place where there was a party uptown. Their sister Germany was in attendance. One day at the party, one dude tried to kick it with her, but she wasn't interested. But the dude kept on pushing and harassing her. So somebody that was in the party ran to Taunty in a rider street in the Calio to tell Kev what was going on. Kev rushed to the party. And when he got there, the bouncers had that look on their face like, uh oh, they knew something was going on. They didn't, they didn't even pat him down, check him to see what he had on him. He went in and he welled on dude that was giving his sister Germany a hard time. A week later, Kev, Pete, and their boys was having a basketball game. And while the game was going on, one of Kev's boys alerted P on a group of boys approaching him. It was the same dude that Kev handled for messing with his sister. Kev dropped the ball and approached the dudes and started arguing. P and his boys reached in their tote bags and got those things out. Before you knew it, the dudes took off in opposite directions. You can see this event being taken place and depicted in the beginning of the movie about it. Key business partner and the vice president of No Limit, Anthony Boswell, aka Big Boss, played Master P's brother Kev in the movie about it. But let's get back to the story or to Kev. Kev and P and the Tuesday crew had an ongoing dispute with this group. But with this outside beef, it was also in a turmoil within the Tuesday crew. Just like any other crew, the Tuesday crew was a deep boy clique and they had extended members. You had the immediate ones who was friends, but each member had their own boys and underlinks under them. Some of the members started sabotaging the enterprise. P stated before, well, a couple of times in a couple of interviews that he became paranoid and not really trusting no one. Kev flipped out. He suspected two members 
of their organization that was trying to sabotage the movement. You can see this depicted in the body movie and the characters by that of the name Primo, where you see P shooting the leg on the boot about it movie, and that of <laughs> Mr. Servon, Pac Man. Plus, you have the crooked cop in that movie by the name of Friendly. You know, Friendly character was really an eponym for all the crooked cops in the society. Friendly, even though Friendly was in the singular on the movie, he's really depicted of how crooked cops operate. So Officer Friendly was an eponym or he was a singular playing as the total package of how crooked cops roll. You know, that of robbing other hustlers and taking back the drugs and recycling it back to other people who they roll with. But you had those who wanted to sabotage their clique and take over. Kev and P used to preserve things if you know what I'm talking about but when the drought came about they could weather the storm and you know when there's a drought in the city the hustlers used to crow that you mean up the prices on that work because nobody else had it so if anybody else wanted it they had to pay a hefty price to get that work so they could stay afloat within the hustling game all the D-Boy cliques had their spots where they set up shop and were in competition with other D-Boy cliques. P wanted a change. So P has the Kali with his girlfriend, Sonya, and his son, Romeo. But let me clear something up. Romeo is not Kevin's son. Kev have a son by the name of Little Kev. And Little Kev mother just passed away recently. If you go on Master P's Instagram page, there's a picture of Little Kev with Master P two sons, Romeo, who we know as Percy, and his other son, Versi. And if you read the caption, P is explaining how his nephew, who was little Kevin, mother just passed away and how she's in heaven right now with his brother Kevin and how they both seen each other again. You could go on, on Masterpiece Instagram page and check that out. But people get misled by the scene on about it where P was narrating when he said, I can't let my brother down because I don't want his son to grow up like how we growing up but if you notice in the movie Kev girl never had the child yet but P was speaking in character to explain a certain situation as far as the events that was going on but anyway while P left to go to Cali Richmond that is he called a Silk, C, and Kev to come up. A Silk and Kev took the offer. And while being in Cali for a short time, Kev couldn't cut it no more. So he, he headed back to the NO and he re emerged in the dope game. But certain elements don't mix with the game. We all know that Kev wasn't no joke. Kev was a nice person at the same time he had a temper and I said he ain't had he wasn't nobody to take no shorts he was good with his hands and he was good with handling his business but he had a heart and he had a good side but in 1990 Kevin Miller was set up by those in his own circle and they killed him now, there's different stories revolving 
around what really happened to Kev. Sometimes you have to be really careful of what you see on this internet because people say some of the wildest things. This person did this, that person did that. And I know you're also the Vlad interview of Silk. And he stated that it was Kevin's friends who killed him or one of his friends. And he took his friend like he took it as if it was something like, yeah, yeah, all right, whatever. We friends, but you know, it's all good. And that's supposed to have been the same dude that shites to him. And if you go and listen to the R.I.P. Kevin song on the Crown Family album, we listen to see Murder's verse. He was talking about Kev and how Kev was, you know. He was that type of person that was kind at the same time. And he said that you can't really trust nobody. And, and Kev being that person open like that cost of his life. But at the same time, Master P just jumped into the rap game. And he completed his first album called The Mind of a Psychopath. But a year and a half prior to this, P and all the candy click used to meet up with each other on Saturday mornings at the basketball court. And they used to share dreams on what they wanted to do with their lives. And Glenn Metz Jr. can vouch for this. P used to sit around and say that he wanted to get into the music game. But he said you had those that was in tenders around there had that response like yeah 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 like whatever you know yeah we had you but whatever but P started his label and when he started his label when he went to um, Richmond Cali he almost quit due to the death of Kev and P thought that he wasn't gonna live past 21 himself but he took and channeled the pain and hurt of Kev death and made it work for No Limit Success. He said it at the beginning of his last Dawn album that his brother Kev took the death. I mean, he took the kiss of death so he could be the last Dawn. Kev death was that motivation that caught, catapulted No Limit to run like it is today. P would make it his business to mention Kev and his songs. He always had him listed in the inner credits of the album cases and always gave him a shout out on all his albums. A side note, Kev was depicted in Master P's Soldier video at the scene where they was at the round table. Is a cartoon animated video. But on that video, you see a depiction of Kev at the round table. Go and check it out for yourself. You can see it right on YouTube. And years later, you had the masterpiece stalker, Antoine Kevin Baker. He would appear at every No Limit show. He wanted to get on No Limit badly. No Limit staff noticed Baker at all their shows. And one day, he called No Limit Records to ask to speak to P. They replied that P wasn't there. But while they having this conversation with Baker, P walks in. And one of the No Limit staff members gave P the phone. And P said, oh, is you again? Baker said, yes, it's me. Your brother, Kevin Miller. I never died. I just transformed to another body. This when No Limit heightened their security. And Baker evolved at the No Limit headquarters 
and he was arrested and he was ordered to stay away from no limit and if he get caught be around no limit or anybody from the no limit family that he was going to receive 10 years the judge told him this and then you had the Isaiah Rashad who did a song called R.I.P. Kevin Miller and there was a little speculation and different things going on about this R.I.P. Kevin song and they was asking is he doing this song and um honor of Master P brother well check this out he used this song as an analogy of his success or how he wanted his legacy to live like that of Master P and his brother Kev because though Kev is not here in the flesh Master P keep him alive by mentioning him in all of the No Limit projects and Rashad used this as an analogy and true of Master P and them, the Real Touchables like I said before they did a R.I.P. Kevin song on the Crime Family album Kevin memory and legacy live on through the Miller brothers all three of them P, C and Silk will all go out and get their brother Kev tatted on the arm you can see it all three of them got the Kevin Miller tattoo on their arm and P showed a picture of Kev at the end of his ghetto trying to kill me video though P did the footwork of No Limit it was Kev death that P used and transmuted to make No Limit successful and to prove that to the doubters that they was wrong so this is it this is part one part two will be coming real soon but um shalom salams godspeed